life today moves on with vigorous drive and action. The forward thrust of progress sets an ever-increasing pace. Man's love of the wide open spaces, the breadth and sweep of a far-flung view, has given way to the narrower confines of ultra-modern living. Today, more and more millions of Americans live and work in metropolitan areas. Habits of eating are time to the tempo of busy lives. Yet while we're adapting ourselves to a changing manner of life, our food preferences are just about what they've always been. The influence of the changing seasons on the availability of various foods has been practically eliminated. This is quite evident in the abundance and quality of vegetables in the modern supermarket. The conglomerate mass of dull and unappetizing vegetables that used to be found in the average grocery store has been supplanted by an orderly and colorful arrangement that appeals to the eye as well as the appetite. Today, people in every walk of life are consuming more fresh vegetables than ever before. The tomato is widely used as a fresh vegetable in combination with other foods and in sauces. Sweet corn, aside from its popular appeal in the form of a hot buttered ear, lends itself well to mechanical harvesting and handling for fresh market canning and freezing. Cabbage grows well in highly fertile soil, is profitable to the planter, and is used in green salads, coleslaw, sauerkraut, as a cooked vegetable or a meat wrap. Peas, a cool weather crop, grow best in the high valleys of mountain areas in the west and northwest. Peas and beans are among the oldest vegetables known to man. The popularity of both is due in part to their adaptability to the climate and soil of western states. Through hybridization and selection, plant breeders have developed improved varieties of stringless pole beans. Hand-picked at the peak of maturity, high-quality beans share in the increasing demand for fresh vegetables. Onions are a large volume crop in many western areas. The onion is valued as an export commodity as it lends itself to dehydration, in which form it is used in soups and as a food seasoner. The onion is a sturdy traveler. It is shipped annually in large quantities to various parts of the world. A tractor with a body of special design is used to harvest broccoli. Only the bud heads are picked as they reach prime maturity, leaving the rest of the plant intact. The artichoke, steadily gaining in favor by lovers of good food everywhere, is considered a vegetable delicacy by those who enjoy them. Western-grown celery, famous for quality, requires plenty of moisture and grows best in the moderately cool temperatures and fertile soil of irrigated western lands. Here it is being field packed for immediate shipment. Asparagus, an important crop, grows well in the deep, moisture-retaining soil of the warm valleys of the western United States. To produce paying crops, considerable labor and expense are required for initial plantings, which, when once established, need no highly specialized upkeep. Because of the shape of the asparagus stalk, it is shipped in pyramid-type crates. The crates are braced in the cars to prevent shifting. In growing vegetables under irrigation, the land must be level to ensure the proper distribution of water during the growing season. The land plane does an excellent job of smoothing the surface before starting preparatory tillage operations, which begin with plowing. The multiple hydraulic plow affords a good example of the type of modern equipment necessary to large-scale production of quality vegetables. The use of choice land and expensive specialized equipment puts the grower of vegetables in the competitive field of big business with all the unpredictable risk it involves. In order to prepare a fine, mellow seed bed, several properly timed tilling operations are required. This combined chisel and spiked tooth harrow further conditions the soil. Not only is the topsoil loosened and thoroughly tilled, but the undersurface is broken up and aerated. Vegetables attain their highest quality when grown in fertile soil 
rich in organic matter. Experienced growers place great emphasis on the proper preparation of a firm, moist seed bed before planting. Most growers do their planting in double rows on a broad ridge with furrows between ridges for irrigation and drainage. While the lister is forming the seed bed and furrow, the outrigger leaves a guide mark to follow in making the next ridge. In addition to organic matter, commercial fertilizers are used extensively to keep the soil at a high level of productivity during the entire growing season. Fertilizer is drilled in before or at planting time. In either case, the fertilizer is placed in a band below the seed level. This implement can seed from two to eight rows in a single operation. The depth at which the seed is placed varies according to the kind of vegetable and size of seed planted. Through concrete-lined canals, great volumes of irrigation water are brought over long distances from huge storage dams. The water is siphoned into furrows of the field at a slow rate of flow and allowed to run until the soil around the plant roots is moistened. Large quantities of water and a steady supply are essential to the production of premium vegetables. Some growers are put to great expense in money, time and labor by providing protectors for the young plants. Caps are used to stimulate early growth and increased plant yields by creating better growing conditions for certain crops. Vast acreage of our western country is devoted to the cultivation of head lettuce. Greatly improved growing methods and varieties have kept pace with the ever-increasing demand for this popular vegetable. More than three-fourths of the thousands of carloads consumed annually in the United States is produced along the west coast and adjoining territory. Timely thinning out of plants makes for sturdier growth and leaves ample space for development. Plants with plenty of room to grow mature faster and are of better quality. The plants are blocked out from 12 to 14 inches apart, ensuring large, solid heads at maturity. Individual experience determines the frequency with which lettuce is irrigated, depending upon the type of soil and conditions of climate, which vary according to location. On reaching maturity, time becomes the essence of efficient harvesting. As lettuce is highly perishable, and must be moved gently and quickly to preserve quality and minimize loss. Specialized loading equipment moves the lettuce from the field with a minimum of handling and gently drops it into portable baskets aboard waiting trucks. The need for quickly harvesting this perishable product calls for the design of equipment to do the job efficiently with little or no damage. No time is lost at the packing shed in rolling the baskets of lettuce off the trucks into the cooler atmosphere of the interior, where the waiting hands of experienced trimmers quickly remove imperfect or discolored leaves. Not the slightest irregularity escapes the watchful eyes of the expert workers who inspect thousands of heads a day. A revolving table keeps the heads within easy reach of the packers. The lettuce is carefully arranged in crates completely lined with heavy waterproof paper between layers of finely crushed ice. Only heads of uniform size are selected for the pack, which is completed with a top covering of paper and a final layer of ice. Packing in the field is a later innovation in harvesting and packaging lettuce. This operation is accomplished in the cool of early morning before the heat of day can wilt the product. The preference for field packing is based largely on economy and expeditious handling. Packages of lettuce on wooden pallets or platforms are picked up from field trucks and carried by mobile hoists to a vacuum cooling plant and placed on movable floor racks. The racks of lettuce are rolled into large steel cooling tunnels for quick chilling to remove the heat of the field from the lettuce and carton as soon as possible. The warm air is pumped out, forming a vacuum that causes evaporation of surface moisture, 
bringing its temperature down to 33 degrees in a few minutes. Refrigerator cars are iced near the loading point in order to have them pre-cooled and ready to receive their cargoes of perishable produce without delay. The cartons are rolled on conveyors from the coolers to the reefers, where they are loaded. In a further development of the vacuum cooling method, the refrigerator car is run into a mammoth vacuum tunnel, and both car and its contents are cooled in one operation. Carrots are one of the great volume crops in some sections of the West. They have a high yield per acre and are a favorite crop with growers. This tractor-drawn lifter is loosening carrots as a first step in harvesting. Field workers gather and arrange them in rows, grade them according to size and quality, and tie them in bunches. The practice of removing carrot tops in the field is proving profitable for both bulk crating and cello pack. The carrots are taken from the field to the packing shed where they are thoroughly washed. They are then sprayed with pressurized water as they travel an endless belt. After washing, they continue on through a mechanical grader that separates them according to size. Progressive packers are constantly devising improved methods of grading and packaging, enhancing the popular appeal of all varieties of vegetables. As a final preparation for packaging, expert hands ensure a further degree of perfection by passing only flawless carrots and tossing out off-grade, off-color, or damaged culls. Uniformly graded and sized, the carrots pass between two rows of girls who package them with the aid of a measuring device that drops them into cello bags, making possible self-service merchandising in a sanitary, convenient, and efficient container. Automatically sealed, they are then packed in cartons and shipped in refrigerated cars to market. Many people still prefer carrots with tops. To meet this demand, packers and shippers continue to crate bunched carrots in layers of snow ice, which prolongs their original field-fresh goodness. Crates of ice-packed carrots shipped clear across the country reach their destination still containing ice in sufficient quantities to assure a product of the same quality and condition as when harvested. Wrapped in waterproof paper, the package is securely bound, and the contents protected from dirt and dryness is kept cool and fresh. The crates are rolled from the packing house into waiting cars. Snow ice in great quantities is blown into the car, filling all available space between and around the crates until they are completely embedded in the cooling refrigerant. The manufacture of millions of tons of clean, pure ice for the exclusive purpose of preserving produce while in transit has become an important business enterprise. Fast, powerful engines and mile-long reefer trains of the Union Pacific Railroad form the all-important link in a chain of railway transportation spanning the United States between Western growers and Eastern buyers. Trains totaling thousands of carloads of vegetables are delivered daily to consumers 3,000 miles away. Starting from points in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, shipments move eastward. Those from southern and central California converge at Ogden, Utah, where Union Pacific Yard facilities make possible the handling of thousands of carloads of perishable produce from all parts of the West. At this ultra-modern icing dock, trains arrive regularly round the clock. Trains consisting solely of refrigerator cars to be re-iced by this latest mechanical icing unit 
with the capacity for re-icing a car in less than one minute. With two of these icing units in constant operation at one icing dock, thousands of tons of ice are cracked and tumbled into reefer cars every hour of the day and night as trains from up and down the Pacific coast arrive to be re-iced before continuing the long trek eastward. When winter comes, the cooling process is reversed. The huge quantities of mammoth ice cubes, so essential in summer, are supplanted by safe and dependable alcohol heaters in the winter. They are placed in the bunkers at each end of a car to maintain a temperature that will keep the load from freezing. No longer do the changing seasons regulate the availability of fresh vegetables to consumers, no matter where they are. The irrigated west and modern transportation supplies them throughout the year. All trains converge in southern Wyoming and continue eastward to Denver and North Platte, Nebraska. At North Platte, eastbound trains are taken apart and the cars quickly reassembled into new trains for continued runs to the east. The operation is performed with push-button control by an operator in a nearby tower. Cars are diverted to different tracks by gravity, with speed controlled by the electronic yardmaster. New trains are made up for movement to eastern terminals, with stops at Council Bluffs and Kansas City for checking, re-icing, and delivery to connecting carriers in all directions. The movement of perishables requires continuous day and night servicing with the least possible delay. No railroad offers more strategically located terminals for diverging of perishable shipments to points east, north, and south than Union Pacific through the Council Bluffs and Kansas City gateways. While the nation sleeps, mechanized monsters of the rails haul trainloads of crisp, cool vegetables through the night. Vegetables for all the cities of the east. Through Chicago, one of the greatest railway and consumer centers in the world. Western vegetables distributed throughout the country, north, south, and east, into New York City. Thousands of carloads of fresh produce for Atlantic coast cities, the most densely populated areas in the country. Vegetables that look good and are good because they haven't been where they are for very long. The display of fresh Western produce in Eastern markets any day in the year seems almost unbelievable. Quality vegetables of today look better and are better. The wilted variety once displayed at the corner grocery a few months of the year is a faded memory. Nationwide distribution by refrigerated railroad transportation has been an incentive to the grower in his efforts to improve the appearance and quality of every vegetable variety. Millions of busy housewives responsible for the careful preparation of wholesome, healthful meals for their families are afforded the modern convenience of an unending year-round supply of fresh vegetables so essential to the well-balanced diet. Keeping pace with the advantages of Western volume vegetable production and fast refrigerated transportation is the intelligence and cooking skill of today's American housewife. Always aware of the physical requirements of her family, she is constantly improving methods of preparing and cooking vegetables to keep her charges strong and healthy. She uses as many fresh, raw varieties as possible, since they're always available in plentiful supply. Those she cooks are prepared to preserve and retain their vitamin and mineral value. Few people realize the important part played by the grower, the packer, shipper, and transporter in making our standard of living the highest of any nation on earth. At no time in the history of eating has the vegetable salad achieved more variety or a higher degree of crisp, crunchy goodness. But primarily, the health-promoting wholesomeness of fine vegetables is a product of nature, a rich growth of the soil, in the fertile valleys of the West, where many thousands of acres are devoted to the production of prime lettuce. Lands which once were desert wastes, made fertile and prolific by systematic irrigation. From the air, this cultivated area of geometric design looks like a drawing. A valley town, 
built and sustained by the product of a land whose population earns a living from the fields they plant and cultivate to meet the needs of a nation. The vastness of an area and of an enterprise is symbolized by the crop duster, ever alert to the incessant onslaught of insect pests. The land plain tells us that the farmer of today has attracted an army of able assistants to meet the demands of an ever-expanding agricultural activity. His partners are the horticulturists who help him solve his soil and growing problems. The manufacturers of farm machinery who help him till, cultivate, and harvest. The purveyors of chemicals, minerals, and fertilizers. The thousands of seasonal workers, always a harvesting problem, because labor availability and employment must coincide with crop maturity. Perishable crops won't stand delay and must be harvested immediately. Also aiding the grower at harvest time are the companies that rent and operate mechanized harvesting units. Rapid growth of the vegetable industry is responsible for the many processing, cooling, and icing plants located in western areas. The familiar string of yellow refrigerator cars is a constant reminder of the growing importance of fast refrigerated transportation by Union Pacific Railroad in delivering to you garden green vegetables fresh from the West. Music